Do you want to go to heaven when you die, or would you rather be with Jesus? In other words, if Jesus was sitting on his throne in the Bronx, would you rather go there and be with him or be in heaven? We're going to be exploring that today. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. A spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Today I'm going to muse out loud about some things that have been stirring in my spirit. About being close to Jesus in proximity. And I know I've covered this in some of my earlier podcasts. But I feel like I might be approaching it from a little different perspective than before. And the idea is being close to Jesus and making that more of our focal point rather than being in heaven. Now, we go out and we evangelize and we have tracks and you know, there are different kinds of there are different types of tracks. Um, you can get tracks from the Gospel Track Society. Just give them an offering and they'll give you a whole box load of tracks. And I like to read them before I pass them out. Uh, I'm thinking about making some of my own so it's more of a real story. But some of these tracks, when you read them, the idea is, do you know where you're going to go when you die? The idea is that you want to go to heaven. And that the underlying precept when you do that type of evangelism is there's only two places, heaven and hell. But is that true? Is that biblical? I want you to explore this with me today. We are having coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Now, first off, when I talk about handing out these Are You Going to Heaven or Hell Bible tracts, I, I think that's good. People are doing, at least they're doing something, right? And this is just a different perspective on this. I'm not saying people are evil. <laughs> they pass out Bible tracts. So don't, please don't twist my words and say that's what I'm saying. Because I hand out some of these Bible tracts, right? But my conversation, with me, it's kind of a conversation starter. Sometimes I'll do the hit and run, like, here's a track, and then run. You know, but I don't, I don't really do that. I like to engage with people and be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying and get them closer to Jesus no matter where they were in their relationship, but get them closer to Jesus than they were before they met me. Now, let me share with you what got me thinking about this in the first place. I think it was a couple of years ago, there was a Facebook post, and one of the comments inside this post, and the post was basically, you know, do you know where you're going to go when you die, heaven or hell? And this lady said something that just kind of floored me. She said, who cares where you go? It doesn't matter where you go. The Lord is worthy to be praised, whether you're in heaven or hell. And I started thinking about that. Now that is an amazing perspective. You know, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Either we do it now or we're going to do it later, right? And this lady said, it doesn't matter where you end up. And I'm like going, you know, she, she, I think she's on to something because it's really been in my spirit for a couple of years why she said that. I've been thinking about it. I'm like, you know, even if you're in hell, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Then Joseph says something. He says, you know, brother, I've been thinking. You know, I, he, he's talking about it, struggling. You know, the Romans 7 struggle that we all kind of, we all kind of go through the Romans chapter 7 struggle. And he's like, you know, even if I went to hell, I would still tell people, about Jesus, because he say, he died for us when we were yet sinners. He saves people from hell. So even if I went, I would praise the Lord. And I'm sitting here, I'm like going, you know, 
This is kind of what that lady said. And you know, there is a passage in the Bible that talks about this. And I'm going to read this to you because there's a guy that's kind of in this situation. Check it out. It's in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off in Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, There is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Now, here's the part where we're kind of talking about. So, in verse 27, okay, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now, isn't that interesting? The scriptures are supposed to save people from hell. I mean, they're supposed to read the scriptures and be so convinced by them that they get saved. So recently, as I've been musing about this, I've been seeking the Lord about this. And one of the things that hit me in the spirit is we went street preaching one day, and the Lord conveyed to me in preaching that we are to love people because they're on their way to hell. That's why you go out on the street. You don't preach to the same people that have heard it 10,000 times. <laughs> K. Russo, it's a public heralding of the gospel. So at the stoplight, it's a great thing. Um, you get four lanes of traffic. When they leave, there's a few lanes from the other side. <laughs> so you can go from one to the next. And you can preach to a lot of people that wouldn't set foot inside a church that way. But the Lord was impressing upon me to love them. And I'm going to share with you a couple of episodes in the Bible. One of them is in Exodus 32, where Moses goes up to seek the Lord. And while he's away, the children of Israel go, where's Moses? Let's make us a golden calf. And Aaron makes the golden calf. And uh, Moses comes down. And guess what? He intercedes for these people. Listen to this passage here. In verse 30 of Exodus 32, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin. Now I will go unto the Lord, peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now... If thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. So Moses here is truly interceding for the children of Israel, which did a a grave sin. They made golden calves, or a golden calf. Moses is willing so much to intercede for them that he's willing to have his name blotted out of the book of life. Is that sinking in? 
love your neighbor as yourself. Does that sink in? We're to love these people, not save our souls. And I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into that, what I'm talking about here in a minute. Let's go to another example where there's a man of God who is willing to be accursed for his brethren. Thank you for listening to the Coffee with Conrad podcast. Please take the time to subscribe wherever you are listening to this podcast. Be sure to follow Conrad on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The links will be in the show notes. Let's dig deeper and go higher with God. Team Jesus. In Romans chapter 9, Paul's writing and he says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. Man, that's a whole sermon in itself, isn't it? That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So Paul the Apostle here is willing to be accursed from Christ for his brethren's sake. Has that sunk in? This is the same guy that says, if I give my body to be burned, it's nothing if I have not love. And this is what hit me before we were street preaching that day, is if I give my body to be burned, if I street preach, it doesn't matter if I don't have love. I truly want to see these people. The compassion of Jesus needs to be in me so strong. You know, can you say that? Can you say, I wish I was a curse for my brethren's sake? And we're going to examine this just a little bit more from a different perspective in a second. But I want you to think about it. Moses, which is an example for us, he was a leader. He had a very close relationship with God. He was willing to blot himself out of the book of life. Paul. The apostle wished he could be accursed for his brethren. Does that sink in? Let that sink in for a minute. Now, moving on to a different part of this revelation. Jesus says, well, let's just read it. And I know I read Matthew 7, 21 through 23 a lot, but I feel like I should read it again. And this gives you the idea that people will serve the Lord with their lips, but not with their heart. And that's what I want to get across to you here. In this passage, there's people that obviously call Jesus Lord. And listen to what they say and listen to how Jesus responds. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, the the part, you know, there's many things that we could talk about this. There's a lot of people that think they're saved. There's a lot of people that are doing Christian type things. But Jesus says they're working iniquity, but he also says in the crux of this, podcast that I'm talking about, is depart from Jesus, not depart from heaven. He says, you know, many people, they think they're going to go to heaven in the beginning. He says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, right? But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus says, depart from me. Think about things like outer darkness. Notice that they're away from Jesus. They're away from the Father. There's a scripture that says, He that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go no more out. There's one that says, He he will sit with me in my throne. In Revelation 3.21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and then sat down with my Father in his throne. So there's this proximity with God. There's this dwelling with God, our relationship with God. We need to have that spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. This sentiment is echoed again in Matthew 25. You know, uh, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. In verse 41, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you you curse, into an everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Notice it's depart 
from me. And again in John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hears not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Notice this proximity of a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. God is the Spirit. Those who worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Notice the close fellowship with God. Now, in the prodigal son, I want you to think about proximity to the Father in this, okay? In Luke 15, 11, and he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now visualize the proximity here. As we draw Hebrews 11.6, Hebrews 11.6 says he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. But in James, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And this is what's happening. The father sees that he's coming and he runs out to meet him, right? Verse 21, and the son said unto him, father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Now, notice this. He's a son, but notice the proximity. Luke fifteen twenty four. For this my son was dead, and is alive, and was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now, isn't that interesting? The proximity of relationship with the father. He was still his son, but he lost his mind out there. He's with the pigs, and then he finally comes to himself and says, I need to go back to my dad's house. But notice how the father said he was dead. He was dead while he was apart from the father. Where else can we find this precedent in Scripture? We can find it with Adam. So we see in the Garden of Eden that God made the tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And he says in Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now we know that Adam did not die, that he didn't stop breathing the way we think of death, right? But he was banished from the presence of the Lord the day he ate of the fruit. Remember? You'll notice that the the ground is cursed, and in verse 24 of Genesis 3, so he drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims in a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So Adam no longer had that close relationship with God he was considered dead at that point. Notice it wasn't heaven, it was the Garden of Eden, but the idea here is we need to have a spiritual relationship and be close to God, even if he's in the Bronx. <laughs> okay, because this idea of, are you going to go to heaven when you die? Well, that's we're kind of missing it a little bit. We want to be with Jesus. We want to sit in his lap, on his throne, and hang out with him, even if he's in the Bronx. Now, I want you to muse with me a little bit about this passage here, because I think, it's, I think we think selfishly when we want to go to heaven and not really care about our relationship with Jesus. Heaven didn't deliver you from whatever addiction you had. Heaven didn't, you know, God is in heaven. He created the heavens and the earth. 
It's God that did it. Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners, not heaven. Heaven is basically, just think of it as a location, right? It may be paradise, but if we want paradise more than Jesus, we're missing it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Now think about this. In Luke 17, 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. In Mark 8, 36, it says, well, let's go back to 835, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, for my sake, right? In the Gospels, the same shall save it. That's Jesus, right? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also the Son of Man will be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, notice this. Think, think about the selfish nature. I just want myself, I just want to get to heaven. But if we're ashamed to preach the gospel, he, Jesus is saying, Who's, are we ashamed of Jesus? We just want to get to heaven? Think about it, man. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. Are we ashamed of Jesus? Are we ashamed of the words of Jesus? Do we just want to save our own souls? Or are we willing to be accursed for our brethren's sake, for our family's sake? Think about that. So I just wanted to share with you in this podcast about being closer to Jesus and not really thinking about saving our own skin so much just to get into heaven and have a nice mansion. <laughs> in my father's house or many mansions, how many times have you heard that? But to love people, do not be ashamed of the words of Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. He died for you. He saved you from hell. And if all you want is just to live in paradise forever and let Jesus be over there, you know, doing his own thing, we're missing the mark a little bit, don't you think? God bless you. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends and family. And remember the word fist. Fist. Let's take a fist to the devil. F is for Facebook. I get a lot of my show ideas on Facebook, and I, and I interact with a lot of my followers on Facebook. So be sure and follow me there. I is for Instagram. I love to do a lot of behind-the-scenes fun stuff, and sometimes I do some ministry behind-the-scenes on my Instagram stories. So be sure and follow me on Instagram. S is for subscribe. Please subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast whether it be iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker, Stitcher, and a lot of people follow my podcast channel on YouTube because it's easy to comment, and also there's closed caption, which makes it easy. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. And remember, till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at ComradeRocks.net.